Uh, and the first question is for uh, the first uh, talk, Trust Boost, and comes from Ellie Davidson. And I'm going to quote, uh, I ask, would it be possible for the smart contract implementing Trust Boost to allow users to choose which chains they want for a quorum? Presumably, users will have different opinions about how secure all the weak chains are. And so, some users may want not to include certain weak chains in the meta consensus protocol. Could a smart contract effectively facilitate many different instantiations of the meta consensus protocol? Yes, uh, thanks for the question. So, the answer is this is possible. As we mentioned in the talk, that one of the properties that we want to achieve is uh, configurable boosting where the users who want to build applications can customize the participating blockchains based on their transaction values or their security requirements. Uh, and since we say Trust Boost operates as a proxy contract of application contract, so to reconfigure the security, we just need to deploy a new contract specifying the new quorums. Thank you. Uh, so for the second question, uh which is going to be for the second presentation, uh, interchain timestamping for mesh security. So the question comes from Alberto Sonino, and I'm going to read it. It says, how should the client handle the case where a producer chain stalls, loses liveness? Should it time out? Does introducing a synchrony assumption on the client side ignore the stalled producer chain? Does accepting to reduce its safety guarantees? and run the protocol with the consumer and the remaining producer chains? Yeah, there again, uh, we ensure we we give the clients the flexibility to choose the course of action. For instance, um, suppose we have a consumer chain that is sending timestamps to a producer chain and a certain portion of the consumer chain has already been timestamped on the producer chain. Now at that moment, if the producer chain stalls, the, if the clients also choose to stall with the producer chain, they preserve this um, their original, they basically for the uh, they preserve like the, the economic security, but they will lose liveness as a result. But if instead they choose not to stall and continue with the consumer chain, which is still live, even though the producer chain has stalled, for the later portion, like the blocks that are built after the timestamp timestamp portion of the consumer chain, they will be degraded to the original uh, economic security level of the consumer chain. So again, it's a flexible choice. So at that moment, the clients need to determine whether they want to value liveness more or they want whether they whether they believe the producer chain will soon become live again and they would still want to keep their original economic security level. Cool. Thank you. Uh, so now question four, I have a question for the third talk. Uh, and my question is actually whether, I mean, I think the solution is really cool. I really liked it. Uh, it's so cool that, I mean, the question I have is whether you have any plans of proposing these to the Ethereum community and, you know, eventually include it into the mainnet. Right. Uh, we've been proposing this, uh, quite a lot uh, in Twitter and also, uh, in different uh, communities and applying for different grant programs. So yeah, definitely we are really looking forward for people to try this out and actually use it and make their wallet secure. Um, yeah, so we have been like, there's a bunch of Twitter threads and people have been quite excited about it as well, yeah. Cool, thanks, looking forward to it. Uh, so now I have one question for uh, the first session for Peya Shank. Uh, I was wondering if you considered randomized protocols to circumvent impossible results. Yeah, so uh, for the current execution, since we need to consider the smart contract programming environments, so we haven't considered how to like accommodate the uh, randomized protocols to it, but if we can uh, like make it like adaptable to the uh, programming, on some specific blockchains, I think it's also a good way to improve the impossibility results. Cool, thanks. Uh, okay, so next, next, next question for Trust Boost. Uh, sorry, for interchain timestamping. <laughs> uh, and the question comes from Shui Xiao Wang. And the question is, if there is no change in validators, 
Does this mean that validators will no longer validate transactions, shifting the responsibility of cleaning the ledger and executing transactions to the clients? Um, yes. Uh, so in in the timestamping protocol, when uh, the timestamps are posted, the validators upstream don't really need to know about it. For instance, in the Cosmos ecosystem, as Peya was saying, saying uh, you don't actually transfer these proofs of uh, signatures to the smart contract level. So they are recorded on the chain, but they are not really transferred to the smart contract level. But this is not needed because the clients will be basically creating the ordering of the transactions and they will be responsible for the cleanup process in this uh, paradigm. So as a result, you can also think of this architecture as giving you the ability as a set of clients to basically lazily implement something on the consumer chain itself. So that it also gives this uh, option.